This is, this is super exciting. So Morgan, why don't you tell everybody how, how familiar you might be or might not be with your design? I mean, I've always been a seeker, so I'm always in, you know, whatever's kind of new and happening, I'm digging into it a little bit. Um, so I was in a group and, you know, human design came up. All right, let me see what this is about. So I did my body chart and I started to get into it a little bit. So I hadn't have, I haven't had a reading or any real um, education on it, but I, I am, once I figured out I was a mental projector and that I needed to wait for the invitation and that was my strategy, it was like, oh yeah this is exactly me and it gave me so much permission to just you know wait just wait just back it up so i know i know very little but i know top line things and i have no definition from here down right so wait is your throat undefined wow it's two oh, yeah open throat yeah yeah i was gonna say mary how long have you been in your experiment? I don't think we ever actually answered uh, that question. Two years. It's only been like two years, a little over two years. Yeah. And like, how deep did you like go down the rabbit oh, hole? Oh, I've been deep. <laughs> I, I've been deep. I mean, I, I, I chat with Danny quite regularly and he is kind enough to entertain my questions. Danny, I have a question. <laughs> um, but then also I've, I mean, I've reread Ra's book. I can't tell you how many times I've read Carrie or sorry, Karen Curry Parker's book. I don't know how many times I've taken a full fledged course from another human design um, expert out in the field. So like I've, I've spent a lot of hours. I don't know how many hours, hundreds and hundreds of hours on this stuff. So yeah. <laughs> she deep in the weeds. So what would, what would be like, I guess your biggest, like, you know, Morgan already shared her, like, ah, moments yeah, yeah. when she went into it. So for, like, Mary, what would be, like, your top three when you started, like, digging through the weeds? And you're like, ah. Like, for me, that, like, impacted me the most that I that I felt like I needed to know. Mm -hmm. um, definitely the invitation part. Um, I would love to tell you a funny story if you want yes, to Yes, we're all about funny stories, please. So I had this realization, okay? This is before I found out about my human design. But like to just paint a picture of a projector doing the absolute opposite of what they should do. I have a good friend who uh, is a manifester, okay? But before we were friends, way back when, <clears throat> we were at this activity like an organized activity with other like people our age. And part of it was we had this like sheet of paper with like 23 different things or whatnot. And you were supposed to find someone that did one of those things that might be like, I went to Disneyland. I was on football, whatever. You're supposed to go up to people and be like, Hey, can you sign one of these items on my list? And they would. One of them was, Go find someone that you want to ask out on a date. <laughs> and of all the people in the room, my projector self walks up to a manifester and says, hey, can you sign your name here next to this one? And he he looked at me like. <laughs> I was, I don't know, a ghost. <laughs> and he like signed it and then for months awkwardly like avoided me at other things because we had mutual friends oh, <laughs> brutal and i would like try to casually like we'd be at like maybe we came went to the same game night and oh my gosh so just funny story but like this is one of those things that when i learned about being a projector and waiting for the invitation i'm like oh wow yeah i know what that feels like now because <laughs> i know the opposite when i've initiated it does not go well okay Eventually, we actually did become friends, but of course, it was because he initiated the friendship at that point, right, later on down the road. And we laugh about it to this day, so it's awesome. But, um, yeah, projectors, wait for the invitation is, is it's true. That is really quite funny. I was going to say, um, my brain is not quite working. Ah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Morgan, do you have any funny stories like that when it comes to, like the invitation? Oh my bit? god, this the almost exact same thing just happened to me a couple of months ago. <laughs> I mean, 
<laughs> well, I know better. I mean, that's the truth, right? Like I have, I figured out that I cannot initiate any dating situation at all. Like I have to hundred percent wait. And I had this friend that I used, I mean, I've known forever. And all of a sudden he started like calling me when he was in town and starting to do, you know, and it's like touching my leg. And I was like, <laughs> He's flirting. I'm pretty sure he's flirting with me. And then he said something like, um, I don't know, I'm, something on social that was like, I, you know, you're beautiful, whatever, with some sort of compliment. And I'm like, I think he's flirting with me. So I asked him. <laughs> he was like, oh, I'm so sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. I gave you the wrong impression. And I was just <gasps> like, oh, my God. Oh. I was mortified. I mean, oh, totally yeah. mortified. Anyway, very similar. So yeah. See, you know. Yeah. But it's like through experiences like that, that's what, again, I mean, the, the three, five in me, I just keep on saying that, but it's true. But through experimenting with our human design, it's like, this is what really solidifies it. Like, oh yeah. Cause I've had this experience. I know what this feels like. Yeah. And when I do the opposite, right. And I wait, wow. Am I well received if I wait for that invitation? Right. Like it's huge. Yeah. Yeah, why um, don't we do the flip side? I'm like, Morgan, where was the time where you got the invitation and everything was like, ah. Well, that's the other thing about this invitation thing. It, you can, you don't have to accept it. And that's also liberating, right? As that's, even though it is the strategy, you need to get the invitation and then decide if it's something that feels right to you. And then you move toward it. And if it doesn't feel right to you, you don't. And that's also been like, okay. I have permission to not go everywhere I'm invited. I mean, I have a mantra that I people will say, do you want to do something? I go, I go wherever I'm invited. I've said that for years and it's kind of true. I don't get invited a lot of places, but I go when I'm invited. And then recently I realized, you know what? I don't feel like going to that. I don't think I can. And I won't. Nice. I was going to say, Mary, why don't you share some of the stuff you... I guess really was like, oh my God, with your authority, like being a mental projector, right? Because you know, you guys are not just any like projector, not that projectors are not special, but you know, like emotional projectors are completely different than how you two are wired. So what would, would be some like advice you'd give Morgan? It's like, oh, you know, let me help you unlock the powers of our mind. Right. Yeah. Um, like, I, yeah, I guess I'll just share what I was going to ask for more specifics, but I'll just share what comes to mind. So, um, I mean, I'm sure you heard all the good stuff we were saying earlier, but yeah, I would just say like one of the biggest things is definitely I've, I've come to like, just really enjoy the, I guess the intellectual side of my mind and just have fun with it. And whatever the weird thing is that I'm interested in, I just let myself feed it. You know, if it's for me more so recently, right. It's like human design. And then even um, with the eclipse recently, I was like just geeking out over everything. Right. And so I just let myself enjoy it. And, you know, if I want to spend like hours reading and researching and watching YouTubes, like, I just do it and I enjoy it. And then, you know, occasionally, like the cool thing is my friends know that I'm into this stuff. And then the best thing is when they invite me and go, hey, can you share with me like what's going on? Like with this eclipse or this like Mercury retrograde or I'm like, okay, let's sit down. Like I got you. Like we got this, <laughs> you know. Um, so, yeah, I would just say to like really enjoy that. And then even – to just really like trust yourself. That was one of the things that came up too on that slide. I have found like how empowering it is to realize that I like on the things that I know I am an, an authority and to actually own that because I feel like growing up, I was very much conditioned to just follow authority in general, right? Hmm. Like teachers, parents. I mean, we really all are, but I, I feel like especially for me, like just due to that like extra sensitivity of being a mental projector and having all these open centers, I just most of the time would question myself and doubt myself and always ask for somebody to double check my work. Like, did I do this right? And then again, as a three, five, right? 
and like having that line three and making mistakes, I just, I constantly doubted myself and had to ask for reassurance and validation all the time. And to like go through this process of deconditioning and, and overcoming that and getting to the point. And of course I'm not perfect. I still sometimes ask for stuff, right? Cause I'm human, but I'm way more confident in myself and what I know I know now and like trusting myself and it's, it's just a game changer. So embracing that, that journey and leaning into the things that you like love and you're, you know, that light you up, that feel good, right? Like going back to like the decision-making process of being a mental authority and like following what feels good. Um, yeah, that's what I got for you. <laughs> I mean, the good news is that is who I am anyway. Like really, I do all of the things on your list. I'm like, yep, check, 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 check. But it's also because I'm older and wiser. I probably didn't do all of this when I was younger, but there is that validation. I think that's what's cool about human design is when you, it reflects back at you. You're like, oh yeah, dude, that's why I do that. That makes all the sense. Mm -hmm. Makes all the sense. Good. I don't yeah. Have, I don't have to have any doubt. I mean, not that I have much, that much, but I was going to say, Morgan, was there anything in the slides or anything Mary said that you're like, oh, that is something I didn't look into or I didn't experience. Maybe I should try that. Yeah. I mean, I, I like this idea of switching up your environment. I do naturally um, hermit because that is, I'm not five two, right? So I didn't really know a lot about that before tonight. So, okay. Thank you for that. <laughs> but I did know that the hermit was in there somewhere, right? And I am. I just, I will spend... I live here alone. My daughter moved out, but whatever. And I'm like, woohoo, in bed, you know, happy as a clam in bed by myself in this house. And, uh, but I do love to travel. I need to move my, change my environment a lot. I'm like a shark in the water. If I don't see new stuff, feel new stuff, have input, some, you know, if I'm not sensing things in the outside world, I go a little crazy. So I travel. Stimulus. Oh my God, I need it. Oh, yeah. I feel that. It's probably why I hate the office so much. <laughs> well, it's the same, right? It's just the same. <laughs> oh, th this brings me to a fun question. Mary, if you're willing to divulge, and same thing with you, Mary, I want you to think of what is your favorite environment? Where it is like that go-to place where you go, where you're like, oh, okay, ah. And don't say your house. That's too easy. Okay. Sorry, okay. Peterwing that answer right off the bat. <laughs> Can't Here's the thing, up. though. I'm caves environment, okay? So my bedroom is my cave. Yeah. So, um, okay, here's a weird one. Um, sometimes the restroom, honestly, like bathroom. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the only place when I work in a corporate office that I can yeah. get alone time, okay? And it feels like a cave. There's one door in, one door out. No one's going to bu bug me. It's dark. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, touche, touche, okay. Morgan. <laughs> well, Paris, I mean, hello, there's nothing <laughs> like Paris. And a bathroom in Paris? I don't know. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> the toilet. Uh, oh, that's, oh, that's too what are some other things, Morgan, that you were like, Oh, this is what makes me different. I mean, I think the a super helpful thing is the um, having trusted others that you can talk at, so that you that you can hear yourself speak in order, so that you can get clarity. Um, I'm super verbal, so I talk a lot, and I but I don't like to talk at people. Typically I'm listening also, and we're, it's a, you know, circular thing, but when I need to iron something out, I don't want anyone to tell, give me feedback or tell me, give me advice. I'm like, so I have a, two friends that I say, okay, li you're in listening mode right now. I got to hear myself so I can see what's next, you know, a big decisions to make. And I need to mm -hmm. I hear it come out of my mouth. That's so. that's so fascinating. I was going to ask Mary this because I was like, maybe Mary knows this because I don't. What would, because when, when I'm like making the slides, I'm learning this stuff myself. Like 
Great. They were awesome, I'm, by the way. Yeah. Very helpful. Super practical. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I like, like use several, you? several <laughs> books to like put them together. Um, but what was I saying? How would, I guess, a mental authority sounding board thing be different than like a self-projected projector? Because they also need to talk stuff out. Right. I, I think the difference lies in the environment aspect mm. because, um, you know, again, with the, the mental projector has that open G center personality center. And so um, it, I, I think that's just huge. Like right off the bat, having that open and like if they're in the wrong environment, then no matter what it is, it's going to be the wrong decision, the wrong thing. You know, if we're talking to the wrong person, um, we're not going to be able to get clarity. Like I know <laughs> – I found out, for example, um, you know, I have a family member that I in the past have tried to talk to things about, but the issue is I feel like on top of a couple things, I feel like with my line five, maybe this comes into play too, but like if they would want to offer advice, not just listen to me. And then if I didn't take their advice, they felt offended and they would get irritated at me, right? Right. And so, like, that's one of those things where it's like, ooh, this isn't the right environment. This isn't the right person. Like, that's huge. So I feel like it just comes back to the environment aspect and that being, like, a, a big thing about it. Um, and then, yeah, and then just picking up on the different, like, energy of who you're around. You know what I mean? Because depending on who you're around, you're going to make different connections, um, mm. you know, in your body graph and – yeah, you know. so it's more layered. It's not just talk it out and it'll come to you. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's just what it felt like for self-projector projectors. You can correct me if I'm wrong. I know. I'm not a self-projected projector, but I feel like if I'm not mistaken, can't they kind of just talk things out even solo where it's like. <laughs> yeah, they can talk to a tape recorder. Yeah. They can, and, for, and listen to themselves. Right. And for a mental projector, it's like we actually need the different environments and other people oh. to like bounce things off of yeah. um, to really get that, like, again, that feeling in our body where all of a sudden it's like, okay, yeah, this is it. So mm. speaking of environment, you guys just like rolled me along into the next section of our Ooh, show. Beautiful. Uh, unless Hello. you have any closing statements, ladies, I want to hear it before bringing on our, third and final guest of the night any closing statements for all the mental projectors watching out there you guys are a rare bunch any words of wisdom that you want to impart There's one thing and i forget what you even call it but it's like what you have to be concerned about and for for me i don't know if it's all mental, mental projectors but mine is bitterness oh well, that's yeah. all projectors it's that's all that's okay. not self and so that not self thing i think is super important to touch upon because it is something that I have to watch, you know, especially as um, someone who has to wait for an invitation. A lot of times that gap between getting to be seen, right? You have to be seen and recognized and someone has to ask you for your guidance. I'm a leader as we are, right? I, that's what I've done for 25 years. I'm a director. So, but I have to be hired to be in the authority position like that. And then people do listen to me because they have to, right? But <laughs> an invitation, there's an invitation there. Yeah. But there's been plenty of time where I didn't get invited to various things and I'd start to be bitter about mm -hmm. that because I didn't trust that this isn't for me, you know, that this is a good thing. It was a saving grace for not getting that job or the thing that you wanted, I guess, or you thought you wanted. So I, that is something that's been helpful for me. It's just like, okay, check the bitterness. You don't want to be bitter. You're lucky. You've got all kinds of good stuff going on. Don't need to be bitter. That's so good. 